Hello, boys, girls, and envies, and welcome back to the judgiest place on the internet. My, my name, name is, is Rick. Rick. And my name is Rick. And we are <laughs> the, the Rickies. Rickies. Back in Ricker than ever. Now, Christian, don't touch that dial because your boy went and made a Rick exclusive soundboard. Wah, bah, bah, so bah, go bah, ahead bah, and bah. slide that on over to Erica. She doesn't know what any of these are. Now, I will say the bottom left one, or yeah, the bottom left for you is the theme song. Okay. Bottom right is Circle Jerge. Okay. Top right is Applause. Those three are the same. The rest, Erica. I guess we'll have to find out. Who do it? Boo, boo, boo. <laughs> I've never had so much power. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I would just like to say that I specifically asked you if I got soundboard stuff before yeah. the episode, and yes. you said you didn't have time. You liar! I pulled a little. He's a real Rickster like that. And then, of course, Christian sits down and immediately wants to push every button on there, and I was like. Kick, 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 kick. <laughs> Well, I mean, he only went to push one button, and well, you said that, and I was like, oh, maybe he's got like something specific for later. Well, I just noticed one was a different color, and I was like, I need it. They're all completely different colors, and Christian's like, I don't remember any of these. <laughs> so, oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so B is for Boo. Got it. Yeah, maybe hit the top left one. I would love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not the top one. That was not one. the top one. So why don't you hit the top left one and hear my response? Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're all good. A little Woody the Woodpecker? Good joke. I liked it. We brought it back. It's so long. Oh, my God. S- same length as this Gooby Doo sound effect. <laughs> and it's purple. It's the same color uh, as, as courage. 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 That's right. I love that we have this courage sound did, effect. Did this did the Sims One reference not do it for you? That was the Sims One sound when you fail a task. Hmm. Okay, all right, I missed the mark. What one, one out of eight ain't bad. One out of nine. You know what I mean? I mean, I I haven't played the Sims in um I don't know ever because I'm not forty. I was so. I was really hoping that it was the same sound effect. It's not. Fuck. You did so, good though. I'm quite embarrassed then, because I said Woody the Woodpecker. And... I mean, it did sound the same. Okay. You want to get more embarrassed, Christian? Yeah. I went to a wedding this past weekend for a good Ooh, friend. Let me hear it. I wasn't invited. How good of cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I was talking to someone who happens to work at your same place of work. Place of employment? Friend of the show, Jake's wife. Mm -mm. Am I really about to be embarrassed? Oh, no. And she was like, yeah, I was working there. And he's like, and she's like, uh, I was telling everybody, like, did you know that the the Christian has a podcast? Uh Uh-oh. And they're all like, really? That guy that just sits in the basement by himself all day has a podcast? She's like, yeah, it's really good. And they were just like, oh, I've never heard him talk. Oh, that's how I want it to be. I was like, this is so funny. This is so funny. And I was like, hey, maybe stop telling people he has a podcast. You're ruining his vibe at work. I don't want there to be an expectation that I should be funny in any way at work. <laughs> oh, no. It's a it's a serious podcast. Yeah. Seriously funny. Correct. I can't believe everybody thinks I'm that quiet. Makes sense. <laughs> Ricky's getting it. She has the soundboard mm. in front of her for once, and now she's understanding. Little taste of the power. The power is going straight to my thighs. Do it. <laughs> and then you explode. And then I explode. <laughs> Don't push my buttons. Hey, that's why you married me. <laughs> <laughs> that song, that, to be fair, that Courage the Cowardly Dog sound effect used to be 15 seconds. I decided to cut it to, four, to seven to be the same length as Scooby Doo. I also have that sound saved onto my computer, and I also had to cut it down for whatever episode I put it in. Why do Why do you also have it saved on? <laughs> we talked about it in an episode. Don't worry about it, Joshua. What we do in the bedroom is none of your business. True. It's the sound you make. That is the sound I make when I'm coming. <laughs> That's disgusting. I didn't know you guys came. Uh, he does. What? <laughs> cool. 
<laughs> my soundboard. It's the sound I make when you come. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. This Guys, is a fun episode brought to you by Zoa. Incorrect. That actually is incorrect. We we can't say that. But this podcast is brought to us by viewers like you. Now Thank head on over so to much. Apple and leave a five star podcast review like this one from Kevin and Twenty Five. I love this podcast. I binged all the episodes, and you continue to make me laugh every week. Can't wait for new ones. Cool. Thank you, Christian, Erica, Josh, and Aurora, for the awesome content. Please never stop judging. You're welcome. We would never. That's all we do. That's all we do. We are the judgiest place on the internet. I will say, I think we really lucked out on a name. It's come around on me. Has it? It took three years, but now you're like... It's not that bad. No, it's a good name. It's short, sweet, to the point. I'm glad you think so. Yeah. Every once in a while, I get a little bit of um, imposter syndrome where I'm like, it's not a good enough pun. It's not mm. smart enough. But I also agree. I think it's oh, nice, yeah. short, sweet. Do we need to fix that? And very neat. What would and it if be? you had that on your bingo card, cross it off. Uh, and we don't... <laughs> Just hit the soundboard on this on this podcast. We also podcast on this podcast, and what that entails is going online and find silly little stories, so we can laugh at them and judge them. And sometimes I'm the one who finds the stories, but other times I just have other people find the stories and they email them to us. That is true. So, have you ever heard of the Agtha saga? The Agtha, Agtha, Agtha. O g t h a. Hmm. This was sent in from Andrew. To our email. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks. Unless Andrew. I hate it, then no thank you. Well, let's just get into part one of three. Oh, shit. Okay. This is from eight years ago. Wow. Today I messed the freak up, dude, by admitting to my girlfriend that I pretend she is a giant cockroach when we have sex. <gasps> okay. Uh. I don't... You know what? Maybe I shouldn't consume. I don't know how you're getting off to fucking a cockroach. That's all I'm saying. I just don't get it. It's cough come esque. Boo. God. Wrong one. Yeah, it was an applause. It was, absolutely, it was absolutely a good joke. I liked it. Nope. A moment. No, it wasn't. Ever since I was a teenager, I've had very intense fantasies about having sex with a giant roach. How? I have so many questions. Like, go on. It started <laughs> in ninth or 10th grade when we read The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. Okay. I get your joke now. <laughs> It wasn't boo because it was bad. It was boo because I don't get it. No, it was boo because it was bad. I knew you were talking about Franz Kafka, but I didn't <coughs> know like w- why you brought that up. Mm. But now I understand why you brought it up. This whole podcast, in a sense, is Kafka-esque. Hmm. Is that because you just coughed? As I started to think more and more about the roach boo. creature that the character had become, I started to imagine what it would be like if a woman turned into a roach instead. I found this idea Ooh, very that's hot. hot. That's very, very hot. I would not be repulsed or frightened of her as the characters in the story are. I would take care of her. Then my thoughts start to get sexual with the character. Eventually, I sort of dropped the bit about her having been a human woman at first. Not the part about turning into a cockroach. It's, ah, it was just always a cockroach person. And I kind of imagined this fictionalized roach p- species. Okay. That's not what I thought you were going to say. They Reese's pieces is that what? No, I thought you were gonna say roach pussy. <laughs> this Uh-oh. fictionalized roach pussy. They are giant roaches. Cool. No. <laughs> 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 they are giant roaches, the size of a person, have complete intelligence. I kind of over time conjured up an imaginary friend of sorts. She was one of those roaches, and her name was Agtha. Okay, that on a roach that is a very hot name. <laughs> Yeah, if, if there was a human named Agtha, weird, gross, weird. disgusting, get out of here. Roach, coming. Balls. Jizz. <laughs> ball. Just balls. Oh, my God. Ball. I'm coming balls so hard. <laughs> I came so hard the balls turned inside out. I had a mm-hmm. prolapsed mm-hmm. testicle. I've heard that happen once. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, huh. I would fantasize about her often. Whenever I masturbated, I'd be imagining... <laughs> So you guys can't be mad. I yeah. You guys can't be mad. It's Erica causing the chaos. 
I'm so glad. I was afraid that you might hit it twice and that would be it for the episode. I'm so glad to see it's. You see how hard it is to fight the urge. I'm just doing it to be annoying at this point. But it's I say it's funny. funny. So <laughs> whenever I masturbated, I'd be imagining elaborate. I'd be imagining elaborate scenarios of me and Akta making love. When I started to have actual sex, I found I could not uh, perform if I wasn't thinking of Agatha. So based, how did this guy get a fucking sexual partner? Correct. My thoughts exactly. So basically now, anytime I have sex with a woman, I'm pretending that she is actually Agatha. Not just think about Agatha. I concentrate intently to visualize that I'm actually doing Agatha. I don't want to think about the girl at all. There is only Agatha. Of course, this can never be as exciting as my fully imaginary sessions with Agatha. There are things that her multiple appendages and antenna allow for that a human woman can never match. So anyways, <laughs> the I've... thing she can do with those antennae. Oh, antennases is actually the plural of antenna. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I've been in a relationship with my girlfriend for about a year. Three or four times I've tried to have sex with her and not pretend she's Akta. That's crazy. But I just can't do it. So essentially every time we have sex, I'm imagining she is Akta. Finally confided this to her the other day, and I was blown away by Why? her reaction. Why? Well, because I thought that she might take it a bit badly at first, but that she'd get used to it. She's always asking me if I would still love her if she's a worm, and I'm <laughs> telling her I definitely love you if you're a cockroach. <laughs> would you still love me if I wasn't a giant roach? <laughs> no. I have never seen such a look of disgust before. Outraged is an understatement. She is not even returning my texts now. Can't say I blame her. I'm afraid she's actually going to break up with me and also that this is going to tell people about Akta. Yeah. That actually is the worst outcome is her telling other people. How do, how do you not? You know what I, I mean? Know. Like, oh my God, I thought you and James were doing so good together. What happened? <sighs> he wanted to fuck a roach. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. What's worse, people learning that you want to fuck a roach or that you have a podcast? <laughs> hey, Christian, I heard you have a podcast. No, actually, I fuck roaches as a hobby. Uh, yeah, I just, yeah, that's what I do. It's just the the first guy, the first men in black bad guy, but just the insides. I don't know how I will face anyone. This is going to sound silly, but I also feel guilty about feeling shame, as if Akta will be saddened by this, even though I know that she's imaginary. I just don't know what to do at this point. How how close are guilt and shame? Is it is he just feeling shame? He's like, oh, I'm feeling guilty about Agatha finding out. But it's like, oh. I think you're just feeling shame, and you're you're like breaking it down to be like, oh no, it's definitely I feel I just feel bad. for I'm Agatha. cheating on Agatha. Processing those complex emotions can be difficult. Yeah, especially for I'm. Absolute flex on this guy, proving that he doesn't have aphantasia. Mm -hmm. It's when you can't imagine. Oh, this yeah. boy has. I can never be in this dude's shoes because I can't picture a, a, a giant cockroach that I could have sex with at all. I mean, neither can I. But I, I have an imagination. I just don't see how a giant cockroach could be attractive to me. Yeah, but I think his point is, like, if you say. Think of a person-sized cockroach standing yeah. in a room. Right. You can see that visually in your head. Right. Christian cannot. This pisses me off that you guys can actually... Like, you're not joking that you can actually just imagine that. Like, Of course. That pisses me off. Uh, um, Now, maybe it's because cock is right in the name that it's so hot to him. What if it was called, like, stupid face roach? You hmm. know what I mean? Mm. You, yeah, maybe it isn't as hot. Also absolute flex that he said when i'm having sex with women like he's had sex with more than one woman mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah absolute flex buddy yeah so six years later he decides to get an update so this is two years ago i'm still fucking agtha today i freaking messed the frick up by admitting to my imagine it happened again <laughs> <laughs> today i frigged up by admitting to my co-workers that my wife agtha is an imaginary giant roach Huh? Mm. They moved, I guess, after six years in a relationship, you might as well. 
Seven is the magic number. What are you saying? Get married. If you're already going out with Octa for s- six years, I would wait till seven to get engaged, but. We got engaged at eight years. I was starting to save up a lot of money at seven. <laughs> <laughs> I really started considering it. In the five years that have passed since this topic was posted, I decided to stop fooling myself and I just committed to the love of Octa. I know she's not real per se. Not per se. She's not real. But in my head, she is an actual personality, and I am in love with that personality. I don't care if she is a roach or if she is imaginary. The love is real. Call me deluded. You're, de- you're deluded? But it's <laughs> harmless. It makes me happy. I've not had a real girlfriend again since that incident five years ago. But occasionally, I've had one-night stands via online apps. And on those times, I always envision the woman as Akta, my sensual roach queen. Now, I mean no offense to the women, of course, and even a gentleman once or twice. The many appendages of Agtha make translation to human gender almost irrelevant. I just envision them that they are Agtha. And no, I have never confided to them about it. I learned my lesson. Oh, I'm actually glad to hear that. But it sounds like he didn't because he's <laughs> doing it again. You should not tell anybody about this. Maybe your therapist. Yes. <laughs> the, oh, the giant cockroach therapist down the street? Yeah. The thing about it, though, is that I became so in love with my Akta that I married her. I even did a little ceremony in my living room. I recited my own vows, and she recited hers. I even went on a honeymoon, which technically you could say was a solo vacation to New Orleans for a week. But in my mind, Akta was with me the entire time. Erica, when did you go to New Orleans? When? Yeah, the first time. Uh, would have been... About two, two and a half years ago. 2019? Yeah, it was October of 2019. You maybe shared the streets with this guy. Oh, no. (laughs) In my mind, I think of her as my wife. Now, here's where I frigged up. I got so used to thinking of her as my wife in my head that a few months ago at work, I nonchalantly said my wife in some innocuous sentence. I was think it was something like, oh, yeah, me and my wife love that show in regards to Chopped. So now everyone was asking me about my wife, my wife, because they had never heard I was married or even dating anyone. Everyone kept pestering me about it, wanting to know about her, wanting to see pictures. I became full of panic. I did the one thing I swore I would never do again, and I talked to other people about Akta in real life. I did the one thing I was so worried about having to do. I learned Photoshop. <laughs> We were at a team lunch, and I just let it all spill out. No, not not at a team lunch. <laughs> I told them about how I became enamored as a teenager with the Franz Kafka, Kafka story, <sighs> how my fantasy evolved into an actual imaginary entity with a personality, and how I slowly began to grow in love with her. What started as a, more sexual, a mere sexual attraction to giant roaches blossomed into a whirlwind romance, and that she became the love of my life, even though her existence was in my own mind. At first, I thought I was doing a creepy joke. But I convinced them I was telling the truth. Well, they were afraid and disgusted. Uh Uh-huh. I have been a pariah at work ever since. Not surprised. We all know what pariah means. Right. So we just for our listeners, maybe the listeners all know. You learn that. Yeah, it's a fish in South America. It's a piranha. You said pariah. What did I say? No, this is like King Tut, (laughs) you know. Ah. Yeah. Have you done that bit on the pod yet? Probably a hundred thousand times. <laughs> Christian does this bit and it gets me every fucking time. Her, he'll say, "Wait, what did what did I say?" And then and then what did you say? Mm-hmm. And then what did I say? And then you, he just keeps saying it back and forth. And it, it gets me every time. I try to duck I season red so, season my way out of everything. I think it's so fucking funny. <laughs> That's how I've made it to where I'm at in my life. <laughs> Everybody steers clear of me. We used to have a good social life. Now people only speak to me for work-related reasons. Even working virtually now, nobody sends me a Slack message unless it's about work. I even heard a rumor that people went to HR, but they were, of course, told nothing could be done. I have lost my good work friends because of this, and it is indeed jeopardizing my career because my bosses think I am insane. You are... I. You know what? I need to just... <sighs> This is a rough one, Joshua. I have ruined my friendships and future career prospects due to my honesty. It's not due to your honesty. No, it's not. I'm thinking of starting to look for a new job, although it's difficult in the current environment. 
I can start fresh elsewhere, though. No matter what, I will be staying with my wife, Akta. For me, it is Akta forever. If you must know, I do hope that even if I am an old man, that one day the technology is invented to extract the Akta personality from my mind and implant into a real external body, either of a genetically engineered or a mechanical nature, and me and Akta can then experience genuine physical connection. But if she must remain within me, that is fine. Her love keeps me warm on the coldest of nights. Thank you. I really hope he's taking care of his body. If he's hoping to live for that tech long enough to get that technology. I feel like we're not that far off. I feel like we're pretty far off. Elon's already got the fucking brain chips ready to go. He's number one on the Neuralink list. I just feel like they make like that. What is that robot? That Sophia or? Yeah, I think it is Sophia. I mean. Sex robots? Sophia Vergara. No. No. <laughs> The ones that are like super realistic sex robots. Yeah, and this robot, like, well, this I don't, this robot wasn't a sex robot. Well, you're thinking of the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix. No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, shout out to Kafka for writing such a good story. That dude's like, I'm gonna ruin my whole life for this. This dude wat padded his real life. Yeah. Well, last pi- the last piece. Yeah, her name's Sophia. A social humanoid robot developed by the Hong Kong-based company Hanson Robotics. Sophia was activated on February 14, 2016 and made uh, its first public appearance in mid-March 2016 at South by Southwest. Cool. (laughs) I don't want Did you just pretend to to drop your phone? I fake dropped my phone. This is the robot I was talking about. I don't want to come off too strong, but looking at that makes me want to die. I hate that. Well, time for part three of the Octa th- anthology. This won't want me to make me want to die. Today I friggity frigged up by telling my A parents. Third time? <laughs> by telling my parents that I am married to an imaginary giant roach. How many times? What will you learn? <laughs> yeah, buddy, you got to stop talking to people about this. Except for your therapist. You need to talk this shit out with your therapist. Last evening. Last evening. Last evening, last evening, I revealed to my parents everything about Akta and told them we were married. I even allowed Akta to speak to me, speak through me to them. Oh my goodness. So that she could finally meet my parents after only seeing them from afar. I knew my parents would find it unusual at first, but I thought that they would come to understand and be happy for me. However, I fear they think me deranged. Correct. (laughs) What a fun little... (laughs) <laughs> I fear they think me <laughs> deranged. My mother actually cried, and not tears of happiness, as I expected. They even encouraged me to seek counseling. I explained to them that what I am experiencing in real encouraged them to read through the Tulpa Reddit. Don't know what the Tulpa Reddit is. It has created a very bad situation for me. And Here's, now, I, how do you spell Tulpa? T U L P A. That's Tulpa. Tulpa. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I learned this from a Supernatural, but a Tulpa is a uh, symbol that like if enough emphasis is put onto that symbol that symbol could potentially become real oh interesting so it's kind of like vision boarding but for a giant cockroach wife kind, kind of. of yeah what did I say <laughs> <laughs> Christian's piss <laughs> oh that's not the one I wanted hold on no that one works <laughs> hold on I wish I could do I liked it. Thank you, Joe. I wish I could do the very last bit of that courage impression. It has created a very bad situation for me, and now I feel my relationship with my parents is quite ruined. They keep insisting I seek counseling, and they're threatening. If they if I don't, they will no longer insist me with my student loans. Hey, Biden's got you. He doesn't really. And will not be welcome at Thanksgiving. I feel they are overreacting, but at the same time, I wish I had just kept my marriage a secret. You've said this twice now. <laughs> And you still haven't learned your lesson. I do consider it now to be a mess up to have been truthful with my parents. They are in some ways traditionalists and are simply not ready to understand how entities can exist without physical form and share a mind. It breaks my heart, but I wish I had been deceitful with my family. For the record, I will never divorce Octa. It's it's not allowed in our church. At the worst, I can get it annulled. (laughs) And with our love, I know I can survive anything, but I wish I had never been truthful with my parents. Octa can survive anything, too. Yeah, except for nuclear... No, especially especially nuclear bombs. So there's the Octa. Getting stepped on? No. No. But hey, we're all all weak to getting stepped on. Am I right? I know I am. Am I right? (laughs) (laughs) 
There's the Octa anthology. Oh, Wasn't goodness. that horrible? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so like part of me feels guilty for judging this person because to each their own. Yeah. However, he didn't keep that shit to himself. Yeah, you got to keep that shit to yourself or be in a very safe space. Yeah. Yes, and he was not in a safe space at work, clearly. I feel bad that his, you know, relationship was not in a safe space for him. I mean, that's really unfortunate for him. And same thing with his parents. Um, but uh, yeah, you got to find a, a Tulpa like support group. Yeah. Like everybody can just go there and like talk about their own manifestations. There's got to yeah. be a subreddit or like a discord channel where you can. Yeah. I wonder if like anybody else in people. the world like shares that same fantasy. Gotta be a giant cockroach. Yeah. Specifically because of Franz Kafka's. Yeah. He is a very good author. Like, I feel like that's one of those things where it's like, that's put, like, because you read Metamorphosis when you're so young, I feel like that's got to awaken something in somebody somewhere other than this person. Yeah. I mean, I watched The Fly when I was young. Now I just really want to fuck Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Well, that's separate. What was that book about? Turning into a fly. It was a scientist, I believe. It might literally be the same as X story. Hmm. I feel like I've read Franz Kafka, but I don't remember oh the metamorphosis I it's a short story i don't think i read that it's like it's like really short it's like only like a couple dozen pages i think mm-hmm. but it's just like this guy who like wakes up every day and just slowly change it doesn't ever say explicitly cockroach he just changes more and more into like a bug like creature and it's about symbolism for like some stupid shit who fucking cares Teo, don't fucking add us Teo. he's already cool <laughs> he's already writing a dissertation on us and about to tear us down. All right. Now I'll read one last one here on the front half because it ties in. Ooh. Oh. Today I friggity 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 frugged up by writing a smut fan fiction for my girlfriend's birthday. Okay. So Aurora didn't like it. I know you worked <laughs> really hard on it. This you is put a, so much time and effort into that. This is a listener submission because I listened to the show. Yeah. This is sent in by Noah. It was a Reddit story. It's been about a day, blah, 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 blah. I, 20 male, met my girlfriend, 24 female, at a local art convention a few months ago, and we got along with each other from the very beginning. We have a lot of similar interests, including both being very creative. She loves to create pottery, and I love writing, especially smut fan fictions. I never told her what my stories were uh, actually about, because I thought it might be too much to tell her in the early days of knowing her. And I was more just worried she would think I was weird. I could get that, but yeah, there is fun. such a large community of people that like to write smut fan fiction. So, hey, you're not alone out there, buddy. You're not like Octa and his husband, her husband. Their husband. Their husband. Yeah. Once or twice, she had asked me, and I would tell her about them neglecting the sexual elements. There had been a few close calls, but they never amounted to anything, and I still don't know the tr- and still didn't know the truth. So it was all fine. It was fine because I was lying. By omission, but I was lying. Yeah. Her birthday was a few months away, and I thought that maybe I could write her a special something to hopefully please her and open myself up to her. I decided to write a fan fiction where we would both get transported into the land of Wreck-It Ralph, as it was her favorite movie, and had to work out a way to get out in time for her birthday celebration. That seems like diving into the deep end, right? (laughs) I feel like we could have started off writing just like a sexy realism based fanfic <laughs> um i don't like that it's a children's movie and there's so many children characters in it yeah it'd be one thing if it was like the lorax and it was like the onceler and the lorax who are like adults i don't like that i have to imagine seth rogan's voices in the story somewhere <laughs> i i just really i fully support you you know writing your novels if that's what we call it, and then you they're know, novellas, sh- and, they're under ninety pages. Okay, and then sharing that with with your significant other, but like, can you keep the children out of it? Let's see if the wife liked it or the girlfriend. If she did, I also feel like maybe that's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> I started to work on this and kept working on it in my spare time for the next month. That pretty much explains why I started writing the story and why she didn't know about it, and that leads us up until yesterday. So it had been a long day of work, and I came back to her apartment, and she was staring at her laptop with makeup running down her face. 
at first I was confused and thought something terrible had happened to her family or something. But as I started running to her, <laughs> it's a funny sound, just fucking dead sprint inside of your apartment. Oh, I was going to do the Scooby-Doo sound, but it's not on here. Would be very funny just be like at your kitchen door. Like imagine like the length from here to here and I just like started dead sprinting for four steps to get over here. Be extra funny because of your little legs. <laughs> <laughs> cool at first i was confused and thought something terrible had happened i started running to her i noticed that it wasn't her laptop it was mine i had stupidly left my laptop on with the story open for her to see absolutely dumbass move pretending i didn't know why she was crying i asked what's wrong she started to cry even more, and that's why I was writing disgusting stories about her. I told her it was supposed to be a surprise, and she slammed my laptop, gave it to me, and told me to get out. I was, and am honestly so confused about it, but she sent me a message saying that I had ruined her favorite movie, and that she didn't know how I could write the things I did. The last thing she said was that us getting trapped in the Wreck-It Ralph and having to have a threesome with every adult character to escape was something that a severely ill person would come up with. I don't think she's going to let me come back, but I really miss her and didn't mean for anything to offend her like it did. Also, the story wasn't finished, and I let her know that maybe on her birthday I can send her the final version and she might like it better. <laughs> Wait till you see the conclusion. It, it really comes together. It really needs the third act. She hasn't responded to me yet, so I'm just putting this post here for some thoughts. If I had just turned off my laptop, none of this would have even happened. <laughs> Until you gave it to her like you were planning to do. Isn't that wonderful? <sighs> like I said, I'm not judging like the story itself. I just I feel like the movie choice was the wrong choice. Well, it's also funny to be like, oh, on your birthday, I'm going to make a thing and kind of make it about me and how I'm revealing something about myself. Yeah, it seems like weird timing. It. I don't know. I mean, I feel like if especially if they're like slightly, excuse me, embarrassed of it, like Christian, if you have been r secretly writing poetry this entire time, but you were afraid to like talk about it or. I would just bring it up on a circle of George in the podcast. Or like nervous about it or whatever. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, like wrote me this incredible poem for my birthday. Like I wouldn't say that that's about him. I guess yeah. it also is one of those things where it's like, I feel like smut, spe like smut writing specifically is like, if you don't know the other party is like a fan of this, it is never going to go over well. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I feel like regardless, she would have been upset. Or at least I would have been upset. That's like, dude, you've been lying to me for the two years we've been dating. Yeah. Of like, every time I asked you what you were writing, it's like, oh, it's actually this super cool Wreck-It Ralph infused story where like two people get stuck in and they have to get out before their birthday. And then you <laughs> actually read it. It's like, oh, you left out all the dicks and balls and pussies and butts. Like that's... Why were you hiding that from me? What about this giant cockroach? What's going on there? Oh, that's Octa. <laughs> she comes back in in a major way in the sequel. Wait till you see the end. <laughs> and wait till you see this ad. Bye. And welcome back to this side of the fan fiction list episode. Okay. It's just half. Fan fiction list half of the episode. First half entirely fan fiction. But this half we always start out with the beautiful, the wonderful, the amazing, the never boring, never sad. Ba -da -ba 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 Circle jerk. Is that slow? That also got slowed down. Why are these getting slowed down by like 5%? Weird. Very strange. Erica, what the fuck did you do to the soundboard? What did you do to the soundboard? It's your board. <laughs> Perfect. Amazing. I, I don't even have to edit that a single bit. Nope. Just for you, Joshua. I don't know how he does that. He like does. He gets his tongue and lips in there somehow, and I don't think dogs can do that. <laughs> oh, it's a dog. Never mind. Oh, it's a dog. For this week, Circle Jerge, we're we're kind of close to Christmas time. If you if hey, if listeners, you're gonna be kind of real close. You're gonna be having to pay for expedited shipping. But for the people sitting in this room with me, just in case we didn't get Christian a Christmas gift yet, 
I made us a little list of last minute Christmas gift ideas for Christian. Okay. Why not? You couldn't have, you know, given this to me every single time I've asked you for the last three months what you want for Christmas. There's a lot of smut in this one. A lot of smut. I'm down for that. What? <laughs> So I sent you guys a list. I don't know if either of you want to open it up, just so you guys can have a visual right. res- representation of what sure. I'm looking at. Number one on the list. Hold here. on. Oh my god. God. I have to can open I? up a fucking Craigslist Jesus. link. Yeah. It's the first time I've ever been in Craigslist. I can fucking sign into Google. You can just look at it on my phone. Okay, this is pretty sick. First thing on the list is the 2016 Tiffin Allegro Open Road 36 LA Maroon Coral. RV unit. It's $132. That it $1,000. That thing is worth more than our house. Yeah, but it's cooler than our house. Yeah. Look at that layout. It's pretty fucking sick. Call I, before it sells. Did you call? I haven't called yet. Let's I'll put it on in post, Christian. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Oh, it's already got 14,000 miles on it though. I mean, that's so I know that sounds like a lot. I know it sounds like a lot and we're thinking like are we sure $132,000? But it's such a cool thing. Yeah. And the, the thing is, that's it's one of a kind. You can. It's one of a kind. Yeah. <sighs> so, I mean, what do we think? Is that in Santa Claus's budget? Uh, maybe next year. Okay. Maybe next year. Eric, have you ever seen the movie Snow? It's an ABC family movie with Tom Cavanaugh. You've seen Snowpiercer. We've seen Snowpiercer. Have you seen Snow 2? Uh, Brain Freeze? Uh, is that the one where they're stuck on the snow lift? Nope. Mm, I don't think I have. If you guys need a good movie to watch in holiday season, you want a new one? Snow. It's on YouTube movies for free with ads, but just get an ad blocker. Uh, great movie. This is actually a good movie. This is an yes. actual recommendation. Yes. But also, Josh no, 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 no. that Cat in the Hat is oh a good movie. Oh my god, Cat in the Hat is a great movie. This movie was like for and like when I tell when I tell you when at the end credits an ABC Family original popped up, I about shit myself. I was like, there was no way that was a fucking ABC fan. It's it's about it's got like new Santa lore, so it's like fun and interesting. Okay. It's got um really good like poor people representation. Like they're never doggy like the main character of the story are like poor and that's the whole thing, but like they never like dig at them or it just literally like they're not here's a bad person. The for being working poor. class struggles around Christmas and it it was done so fucking well. Huh. Okay. They actually that doesn't sound bad. I, I, when I tell you, I watched it on two times speed, to be fair. So I don't know if it holds up in one time What a speed. freak. You uh, watched a movie <laughs> on two times speed? What a fucking freak. But there's a Joshua, scene. you know what I have to say about that? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> there's a scene where the bad guy punches Tom Cavanaugh. And it's so funny because it's, 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 it's campy. It's like a. Yeah, anything at two times speed is going to look a little campy. No, no, the whole movie is a little, like, you know, a little tongue-in-cheek. Like, we're going over the top with some stuff. But this guy's like, I don't like you. And then he starts to walk away, and he goes... Uh, Tom Cavanaugh, for those who didn't know, played um, uh, several different characters on... Uh, uh, the WB's Arrowverse. The CW. Yes, Arrow. Hmm. Formerly no, WB. No, not Arrow. The Flash. Uh, the Flash. The Flash. I'm going to say Arrowverse. It started there. Uh, but there's a scene where the bad guy goes to punch him, and he's, where she's like, he's like, blah, 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 I'm angry. And then he turns around, and he goes, ah, what the heck? And then turns around and just gut punches him. It's so <laughs> fucking funny. It makes no sense in the context of the scene. But Next item on my list is a collection of vintage pencils with corn local advertising from Illinois for $35, which is... That seems affordable. That's affordable. There's a lot of pencils there, too. There's so many vintage pencils. What do you pencils. want the pencils for? Like, what are you going to do with them? Oh, they're just vintage, so they're cool to have. So just I'm gonna, use them. I'm just going to put a bunch of pencils on a pegboard. Just use them, I think. I'm going to sharpen them. Do you, you think know? the lead's broken inside of them? I would be so mad. These are pretty sweet. Legally, they can't sell you a pencil if the lead's broken inside That's of true, it, That's right? true, legally. And if the erasers are more than two-thirds used... What's up with old pencils and the erasers just being bad? Probably did, dry rot. Did people just have mm. bad erasers up until like 2000? No, it was actually good until they stopped putting all that lead in them. Oh. Then they right, because using the, graphite. Letters, the lead's in the pencil, not the yeah, eraser. That's how you get the letters. Is that what the joke you're making? Yeah. Yeah. This next one, very high on my list. It's the 
higher dose infrared sauna blanket for five hundred and ninety nine dollars. Okay, so this is like this is like a autism blanket, but <laughs> on steroids. Um, kinda. It you know it helps you sweat it out. I thought I could u- lose a couple pounds, maybe sweat it you out. You are such a sweaty person to begin with. All you need is a regular blanket. Never mind. I thought maybe the number one sauna blanket would make me even hotter. But it's honestly not that expensive either. Like for I know five hundred ninety nine dollars. I know that you led with the RV to make me feel like six hundred dollars isn't that much, <laughs> but compared to the one hundred and thirty two G's, six hundred bones ain't that much. That's not crazy. For a blanket. Oh, it's a, a sauna, sauna blanket. blanket. It's the number one sauna blanket. I feel like you could probably buy an actual sauna for six hundred bucks. Don't look at the next item on the list, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> next item on the list. This one is very near and dear to my heart. This is a car- carved Bulgarian double base for sale. That thing is dope. $2,300. A little detail about this one. It's a standard five size. Five down to low B. It's a five. It's a standard size carved Bulgarian base with five strings. Yes, five. That's down to the low B. Five baby. down to the low B. That's down to the low B. That's crazy. It comes with a padded case and stand and the bow's a very nice faux leather. Oh. Uh, if I'm paying 2300 bones, I want real leather. While this hasn't been played for a while because they have arthritis, the seller has arthritis, Sad. unfortunately. But it's in very good condition. No cracks, no dings. And the top three strings are upgraded, baby. Can we talk about how you said arthritis? Like Arthur the Aardvark? We won't talk about that. Okay. It's got a great deep sound. Uh, and I purchased it in, 20, or in 2000. And it was nicely set up by Scott in Chicago. Oh, love Scott in Chicago. I love Scott in Chicago. He sets things up nicely. He's so good at yeah. setting things up. I always say, getting off Scott free whenever you have Scott set it up. You got to pay. Fuck. <laughs> Listen. Th- Circle jerk. This is what I meant. I liked it. Wait, that was the wrong one, too. I meant. <laughs> what do we think about the do- the Santa bass? I think that you've never played an instrument in your life. So why would I start there? The bass is cool. The bass is cool. Have you seen boom, that? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> seen that, that episode of uh, Tom and Jerry? It's a string instrument. It's not a cello. It's you fucking bow on it, man. You don't go bow. You turn it on its side and cello, cello you got a bass. a bass. But also that you can play it like that. And haven't you seen that episode of Tom and Jerry? Oh, with his whiskers? Yeah. yeah, and he goes, be my baby too. He plays a little jazz or whatever. That was actually or really whatever, good. yeah. That was actually really good. A bit of a big time swing. All right. And he does I, some scat and he goes, bop, 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 and then, and then it sounds like this. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to hit the courage one. Well, you thought wrong. I did. This next one, actually super high on the list. I see that you guys aren't really digging my first couple options. So the next one is a Bandai High Grade Universal Century 1144 scale Neo Zeon Gundam for $850. $850! It's a Neo Zeon! Is it already put together? No, it's no, never it's opened. No, it's still in the box, never opened. From when? Uh, Like, when was it ever made? Yeah. I believe this is an early 2000s model. It does look pretty cool. I mean, it's huge. It's a real shelf piece, babe. And it's only it's one one forty fourth size. Normally, they're one two eighty eight. That's not right. He's absolutely wrong on that. One forty fourth scale is the most common scale. Uh, you can get bigger ones with real grade and master grades, and you get one 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 hundredth scale. A little bit, a little bit bigger, a little more shelf appeal on them. So I, while this is only a high grade, it's going to like lack the stickers. It's going to lack the decals. I'll have to go buy premium Bandai water slides if I really want to spice it up. I'll cool. Have to, <laughs> I'll have to get some panel lining markers. <laughs> there might be a little bit of color correction, and I'll have to definitely get a stand. I, don't, I doubt this comes with a stand. But this will be a real statement piece on our shelf, babe. Yeah, it'll be a statement of we're fucking losers here. You got it. I could have spent this on a fucking sauna blanket and then... (laughs) (laughs) I could have gotten a sauna blanket and vintage vintage pencils three times over. Okay, that's kind of fucked. That was really... The whole thing was built up to hopefully, like, that would be... 
I have backups. <laughs> Don't worry. I know you actually would really like that, but I'm not. I'm sorry. I can't never do- ever pay over fifty dollars <laughs> on a Gundam model for me. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I'm this next one's actually kind of fucking rad I, too. I hate this. This is the Optimus luxury pool table. It's unlike any other pool table with a walnut finish. I hate it so much. It's a thirty-nine thousand dollar pool table. It's pretty cool. I hate it. I hate that it floats on half, but not the other half. Yeah. It only it's floats modern. on a quarter. It only floats on a quarter of it. So modern. It, so sleek. A picture, here's the description. A picture is worth a thousand words. A phrase that has no better use than describing Optimus. This table is stunning from any angle. And the more you look, the better it gets. Not from the angle I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like dog shit. <laughs> for those uh, looking for only the most stunning example of playable art, this table delivers. Playable art, huh? With available customizations with that will fulfill, fulfill even the most imaginative uh, and discerning. Optimus can, can be created with many types of wood in unlimited stains and finishes. It only takes 12 weeks to get. It's also... Ooh, this one's a little little late for Christmas. You also pay for mileage from Arizona. Oh. Yeah. But it's insured for $950. <laughs> So that's something. Wait, you have to pay an extra nine hundred fifty dollars to have it insured. I think that's what it implies. Yeah. No, I think if it gets damaged in shipping, you get back nine hundred fifty dollars. It's forty k. Yeah, so you get back almost one fortieth of it. <laughs> one four one one forty fourth. That's a pretty good deal in Ma- in Gundam <laughs> standards. That's a pretty good deal. If it's good in Gundam standards, there's th- there's a three big metric, American and Gundam. I see here that it comes in. Seven foot, eight foot, or nine foot. What? Why would you want a different size pool table? Wouldn't you want the, the standard, standard pool no, table? No, no, no. The pool table and the pockets stay in the same spot. They just put extra edges on the side to make it harder. So that way, when you invite women over, they have to lean over more and you see their butts. Huh. Yeah. Please, 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 please. Let's get this. <laughs> <laughs> Up next is the... You're not done yet? (laughs) (laughs) Two more. I'm just giving you a couple options. I feel like you haven't been vibing with any of my gift ideas so far. That's true, Erica. You haven't been vibing. (sighs) This one you will vibe with. I'm not vibing with any of them because I've already finished your Christmas shopping and wrapped all of it, and I don't get any of this. We finished Christian's Christian's Christmas shopping Mm -hmm. uh, months ago. I call it Christian shopping. (laughs) (laughs) This one is the Bardison Professional Cocktail Machines with five premium glass bottles included. Ooh. And so this one's a fancy little auto drink mixer for you. You put in the liquors you want, and then you, yeah, with I, a few taps, I'm assuming. <laughs> oh, a few? You insert your cocktail capsules. You choose the you strength you want. You insert your what? Cocktail capsules. <laughs> Why is that sexy to you? Why is why is Erica Turkey Noise the thing you're like when I'm horned up? <laughs> what other option do I have? You could just cool. <laughs> Imagine me saying that when he puts his cock in it. Ah! Cocktail, ah! cocktail, cocktail. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Okay, modern. <laughs> I know. Okay, you don't even want to hear it. Let's just if get to I'm the last paying one. 450 bucks, it better be one tap. Actually, a kind of a cool invention <laughs> if it didn't cost 450 dollars. Yeah. Well, that's for the professional grade. There is a lower grade for 299 dollars. Oh, not fucking cheap. Still okay, this is the last one. I figured you guys hated all the other ones, but maybe the Masingo 2023 <laughs> professional karaoke machine with lyric display screen and two wireless mics. For four hundred ninety nine dollars, would you like black or gray? I'm like, thinking. Ooh. And if I hit buy now as a bit, will it automatically buy it? Yes. Okay, but it's on Aurora's card, so we're okay. Technically. <laughs> um. So in my, I'm think right now I would say gray, but I think black will be more timeless. You know, sure, for sure, yeah. Yeah, gray is a 2023 purchase. Yeah. Also, if you put it on Aurora's card and she sees that it's gray, she's gonna. Go nuts. That's absolutely true. She hates gray. That's true. Except for the cat. 
Yeah, the cat, love. The color, negative. Hate. Okay, yeah. So you found these all on what? Facebook? Uh, yeah, no, Craigslist, Amazon. I tr- Facebook really let me down this year. Bro. Facebook I... normally gives me just the wackiest shit in Facebook Marketplace. It's normally giving me like, here's a $5,000 baseball that's not even signed. It's like, I, I think I do want that. This year, it's it's given me used cars. You should have, uh, you should have been on my Facebook because I got any any guesses as to what I got on mine. You're not gonna guess it. I'll just tell you. Give me a little bit of a hint. A f- famous person from Illinois. Ronald Reagan's I'm, ashes. I should say, I'm sorry, an infamous person from Illinois. Ronald Reagan's ashes. At least I'm pretty. Sh- yeah, I'm pretty sure he's from Illinois. Richard Nixon's ashes. No. Uh, it is... Abraham Lincoln's top hat? It is a clown statue. Oh, no. Made by John, John Wayne. John Wayne Gacy? Gacy? Made by? Made by John Wayne Gacy, and it has his signature on it. Ah! Ew! People are freaks. Is it's this worse than... It's terrifying. Look at it. Are you looking for this? Oh. Let me look at it. And I hate that. Yeah. Doesn't There's, that feel like it should be illegal to be buying and selling things of a that should go in serial a, killer? That should go in a museum. It Indiana, should. Indiana Jones style. Yeah. So I'll read you the... The description. Oh, God, look at his butt. Oh, it's a candle. Okay. I think that's worse. No, it's better. You could, so, burn, you could burn it away. Okay. Now I do like the idea. This candle has been passed down for years. Uh, my uncle, my ex's uncle, was good friends with the creep, John Wayne Casey. What a weird way to state that. What? I feel like I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, I used to be great friends with family friends. I just would leave that tidbit out. And her uncle gave it to her when she was a child years ago. She's now 44 and she gave it to me. I've had it for 12 years now and it's just collecting dust and it creeps me out. Now my three-year-old keeps trying to play with it, so it has to go. His name has always been covered with plastic. You can see the name. I pulled off the the plastic, and uh, they're the same as like the this person, you know, local Central Illinois person, probably, you know, not that smart. Uh, and it, they included pictures of like examples of his signature, so you can see that they're the same. Uh, plus, I know one hundred percent it's real. Because it had all kinds of drawings and letters. Bef- oh, the person, the uh, ex's uncle, had all kinds of drawings and letters before and during prison. We can ship it as well. Trades are welcome. Great for, who- for whoever is into this stuff. I can't find anything on what it could be worth. It's one of a kind. Thousands? I don't know. I really don't care. It's just time for it to go. Yo, I got that John Wayne Gacy 89. Do you have that? I don't know. Ed Zodiac King. Killer 72? I'll do a swap. And then they've got like uh, authentic, like autographed page. Estimated s- value is like five to nine hundred dollars. And then there's um, no that's gonna go for way more than five to nine hundred dollars. Oh, just just sketch. the signature. But then they they've oh. got like a John Wayne Gacy autographed pogo sketch. So it's like the picture, like of him, whatever. And that was esti- estimated between twenty three and forty five hundred. So they didn't even put like a price tag on this they're yeah. like just shoot me some offers that's got to go for a lot of money i kind of I... just want to message them and be like i will give you 15 dollars for this it'd be great uh, for podcast core no i would give it to my mother no. my mom's super into that stupid shit i don't like this at all well maybe it's such a cursed item erica they could talk over on fellow cloud 10 podcast live laugh larceny a true petty crime podcast because they sent a listener submitted sound to us. What? Ooh. So, hello, my name is Trevin. I'm the co host of Live, Laugh, Larceny, a true petty crime podcast, also a Cloud 10 podcast. Please go give it a listen. Bum, 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 bum. After the first listen of our show, when they joined back in July, they were hooked. I know as a podcaster, we don't always have a ton of time to listen to their podcasts, but I always make sure to catch each episode of the Judges as they release. Thank you. So, to say thank you for all the awesome content you've given me, I want to send a user submitted sound. For our show, I'm always coming up with different goofy audio bits and parody songs to surprise my co-host so i thought i would do the same for you 
Are we ready? Mm-hmm. It's titled Erica Has Spoken. I'm pissed. That's wild. I'm so mad. You got me heated. No piss, piss from Christian. Come here, Ricky. Piss, 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 piss. And Josh can tweet it all night. Balls is stored in the cum, May 22nd. <laughs> so let's go, Erica. If you're being a piece let's of shit, go, I'm going to call you out fast. No matter the situation. On her birthday. Let's go, Erica. <laughs> <On her> birthday. <laughs> shit let's like go, i don't go, condone slavery but there is no but after that no <laughs> that was fucking dope that rocked cool do, do i have a career in music <laughs> <laughs> i would have loved if they put that as a stinger at the end <laughs> oh, that- <laughs> well, thank you very much trevin very that was so that cool rocked. everybody go listen to live laugh larceny a fellow cloud 10 podcast and of course the listener submitted sound always preambles you can still get do i have to push a button for that i don't even no, remember no. now pregnant okay. from preamble you can especially boo. if you don't have good constitution boo christian what were you gonna say i have a sour. <laughs> how's it feel yeah i have a sour taste in my mouth and i don't want to talk about any so it's so fucking hot. this is from a listener Thanks. i guess I'll leave. um i asked if you wanted me to read it the other week and you said no you read we read something else so the title is going to sound familiar. Uh, I'm not going to say their name, but can we get a male J name? Joshua, obviously. Jeremiah. Jeremiah is 20. I'm, uh, am I the a-hole for not, co- for not commenting on my girlfriend's weight? I, Jeremiah, 24 male, and my girlfriend, 24 female. We've been dating for over five years now. When we started dating, I was 120 pounds at six foot three. I was severely underweight and unhealthy. I felt like shit all the time, and I was tired all of the time. My girlfriend, 5'1", was a medium build. She had a small tummy and thick thighs, but not much else. Over the five years, we both had our bodies changed. I'm now 195. I feel great. I now have a tummy similar to the size of my girlfriend's when we started dating. Before I say anything about my girlfriend's body, I want to preface, you can say I pray for a preface, that we've both been through a lot. She's tried different medications and IUD and living alone in the different city for a couple of years. And of course, COVID my girlfriend's weight has doubled. I've never known a number. I've never asked. I also want to say that this has never changed my opinion of her. She's still incredibly attractive and I love her and have plans to marry her during cool. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually, in a good way. Like that. that's, that is a very Josh take. <laughs> During the time that her body had changed, we had never had any conversations about her weight. She brought it up a few times, but both times she's broken down crying. And for this, I've lightly asked if there's anything more to it, but she never brings it up. This is to say that even her bringing it up makes her break down. So I don't bring it up and shut down conversations about it when others bring it up. Recently, she's lost 26 pounds. Good for her. She told me happily and I congratulated her on making progress on her personal goal. She got mad that I didn't compliment her body, but it's honestly not something I care about. And bringing it up is like walking on eggshells that cry. We had a fight about it. And I told her that if she doesn't want me to bring it up, I won't. And that since she's never talked to me about weight before, I have no idea how to react to this. She ended up asking me to leave for a bit. And I'm currently staying at a friend's house. I've asked around and I've gotten mixed reactions. Am I the a-hole here? Thanks for reading and apologies if this upsets anyone. And if I'm in the wrong, I apologize in advance. Very, very sweet. Jeremiah. Yeah, that's a hard situation. This is a very hard situation because it is just, I, I clearly it's an emotional topic. Yeah, so right. It's, it's so hard to broach those. Yeah. yeah. Well, and like, like I understand Jeremiah what you're saying, where it's like it's not important to you, but clearly it's important to your partner. Yeah. yeah. And so if you do notice that, you should compliment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. But it's hard to see. Okay, because like. I'm about to get real on the pod. And that's all we have for it, folks. Uh, <laughs> so I think I, did I call you out that time you said that mean thing to me? And Probably. not intentionally. Probably. I know I told Joshua, but a long time, I don't know, this was like probably a year and a half ago. Yeah. I, a long time ago. It was one of those stupid like TikTok things where like, oh, 
ask your partner these questions. And I said, one of the questions was like, when did you find me the most attractive? Oh, yeah. You've thought this on the podcast before. I have it right. Okay. So he said, back in college when you couldn't afford food. <laughs> and like, I understand is, what you were saying. This feels like an Ericaism <laughs> where it's been distilled down to what I said was mean. Those exact fucking words. <laughs> but I feel like the tone was not there. Okay. I'll give you that. Anyway. So that really hurt my feelings because sure. like. As soon as I said bad, it, bad like, implications. Implications yeah. were it's one were of those rough. things where you say it, and it's like that is not how I meant to word it. It's like and now there's no yeah. going back. We're there's fucking none. loaded now. Okay, so anyway, I had a baby. Obviously, um, I lost like twenty pounds when I was pregnant. I only gained like eight pounds back, like right at the end of my pregnancy. And then once Wilson was born, I lost like thirty pounds from my pre-pregnancy weight. Mm. Um, and like that's great and i felt great and i was talking about it you know and i've started started to gain a little bit of it back now that i'm like kind of stabilized yeah. you know my hormones and and whatnot but uh i was talking about it and like oh i feel good like oh look at these jeans i couldn't wear these before like whatever but when someone else makes the comment about it mm. like like yeah like you made a comment about my arms like oh your arms look really skinny there and i'm like oh so you didn't Thank I, and I just said mm. thank you because like it's a compliment. You're complimenting me, and I yeah. I love that. But also, it's like you you didn't like my arms before, or mm. you noticed that my arms were skinny now and they weren't before, and like so it just like gave me a complex. But I had to like actively remind myself that that's not how he feels. Right. He genuinely is he's making an effort because he knows especially like a lot of women after giving birth or or people with uteruses that give birth have like weight issues and self-esteem issues and he's going out of his way to try and make me feel good about myself he's trying to compliment me more than normal to make me feel good but at the, it ended up doing the opposite where i was yeah. like oh i wasn't good enough before but i know that that was not his intention so i'm not like I'm not trying to say any of this by to bash Christian. I don't even remember. Hey, that. let's bash Christian. I'm not. No, Christian. Because... I can't believe you brought up the college thing again. <laughs> <laughs> no, and your that's... arms are as skinny as they were in college. And I think that actually plays into part of it. Like, like when you said that, and you immediately knew, like, I shouldn't have said that. And I think maybe like almost overcompensating for it. Mm. Like, I have to like make sure I'm giving positive compliments more frequently now. I, you're probably not doing any of this consciously. I don't know. I just. I feel like it's such a difficult topic to talk about. Yeah. I mean, I mean, weight is just one of those things that is so, it's such a hot button issue for so many people. Yeah. Hot button is yeah. probably the wrong word, but it's such a deep rooted like insecurity for a lot of people. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Like he, he was complimenting me in the best ways, but at the same time, like it did the opposite effect for me yeah. where I was like, I don't ever want you to talk about my body ever again. Yeah. But that's not true because I really do know. Just tell me I'm beautiful all the time. I do. I know. I know. That's what I mean. Like it's such a difficult conversation because I, I enjoy the compliments, but at the same time I'm like, oh, so. Yeah. Well, maybe Christian can work on his words instead of saying skinny. Just say your arms look hot. Well, that's what he kept saying was like, you look so hot. I'm like, mm. you don't think I looked hot oh, before? I got you. Well, maybe Christian can work on his words and say, Erica, you're a goddess. I've never loved you more ever. Except all the time, I love you all the time more. Correct. Yes. So, yeah, I love you I'm more. Not seeing the pitfall that I'm. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's on the hard thing about it. I I don't have great advice for you because. Well, it's... Erica, that's one way to deal with it. Now let's see how the girlfriend dealt with it. Because after I mentioned the title, Jeremiah said, "Thanks for reading. Here's an update." Oh. So, I got hit by a car. Oh. Shut the fuck up! It says that. I'm a roach now. Nothing too bad, but I broke my leg. Oh, no. I should say I listened to the pod. Was happy to hear my story mentioned. I'd like to thank you for reading. If it wasn't chosen, I was grateful that someone else could see it. I also like to add an update. I got hit by a car. Yikes. Nothing too bad, but I broke my leg. Insurance is tough, but none of that is the point. What the point is that I am now bed bound for a while and hit 200 pounds. You're fine. Yeah. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Six foot three. Like I'm more shocked when I hear people don't weigh 200 pounds. I know. <laughs> Like, you're a grown adult. You should have, yeah. yeah. The last time I weighed, I mean, again, everybody's body is different. Last time I weighed under 200 pounds as a freshman in high school. Yeah. My now ex-girlfriend 
admitted she was no longer attracted to me and that she was cheating on me and was going to dump me. Apparently, her new partner approached her on a girl's night out shortly after she had started to lose weight, and she had not slept with him at that point, but began seeing him regularly as friends. He commented on her weight loss, and that was enough for her to throw away five years. Oh, my gosh. That's all it took was... Hey, you used to be fatter. And then she's like, I will have sex with you immediately. I mean, I guess this all ties back into, like, it's such a deeply rooted thing. Yeah. Yeah. She started the fight that caused the first email because he had told her that, quote, I didn't appreciate the new her. So he was already whispering into her ear. When I heard this, I felt so angry and told her what happens if she gains weight again. She told me the only reason she let herself go was because I wasn't a man enough to stop her. I know that the person I fell in love with was gone. My manhood is below average and is a big part of my insecurity. Ah. Yikes. That's a really bad dig by her then. Yeah. I've since gotten her things out of my apartment. We never moved in together because she studies in a different city. And I feel lost. I have a broken leg, a broken heart, and also I stubbed my toe and that's not great either. (laughs) (laughs) On the broken leg or on the other leg? It's got to be the other leg. How terrible. I've always felt small, and now I feel like I'm not even really here. My apartment was covered in pictures and stuff she helped me pick out, and it feels so alien to see empty walls. I'm not sure what to do until my leg heals up. Until that happens, I'm pretty much trapped in my apartment. Building doesn't have elevators. Oh, no. (sighs) I have a nice neighbor kid who I pay to do chores for me now. He mostly just picks up my groceries, but with his dad's help, he also cleans my car off. Not the ending I was hoping for, but given her actions, it's what needed to be. Thanks for reading, and I forgot to mention... Um, say hi to Olson for me and always love the pod as always love the pod. Sorry, oh, Jeremiah. Man. That is, I feel so bad for you because one breaking up already hard, but to now be like broken up and now stuck at home yeah. and like have, that's a unique like type you already of... had like a hard thing you're gonna have to deal with and now it's like yeah. hey this here's two of the hardest things you, you can't even like escape it no yeah. like you can't like reach up on the wall to take down a picture yeah. <laughs> you're just oh, man that sucks uh <sighs> hey get through these six weeks and hopefully your legs better by then hopefully it wasn't so terrible of a break <laughs> but man i hope i hope that you weren't at fault for getting hit by the car like i hope you're getting a payout you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that would also fucking suck if, like, you have to pay for that and shit. And now you have, like, 30000 Yeah. I hope you get a fat oh. fucking settlement. I hope, yeah. Sue the person. I don't... Listen. Sue the person. I was get gonna a say, fat is there, fucking... It'll come out of their insurance, not their money. Is there any way you can get hit by a car that's not the driver's it's, responsibility? It's rare because typically the pedestrian has the right of way, but yeah. I assume there are situations where you could just, you know... You shame Jade walked. Jade walked? <laughs> You were so jaded while walking. <laughs> that sucks, though. Hey, you're better off without your fucking piece of shit. Like, what a fucking piece of shit to just be yeah. like. Yeah. To throw your insecurity back onto you because she felt like her needs, having not communicated them to you, were not being met. Get her out of there. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're better off. Let me tell you right now, you are better off, but the heart goes out to you, buddy. Yeah. Fuck. Sorry. That's a rough one. Yeah, I didn't yeah. finish reading the update. I was like, ooh, update. <laughs> ooh, exciting update. Ooh, my life is bad. I just thought opening with I broke my leg was just the perfect amount of sad comedy. I was like, that's a wonderful, wonderful way to go. And you didn't that. read the rest of it? I thought it was a good update. Oh, He's slowly turning into a... Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your listener submissions. And if you want to follow us on our social medias, Erica, tell them where they could do that. Oh, let me just tell you real quick. Uh, you know what would be a great idea? What's that, Erica? You you cut my voice saying all of our socials and I can just push a button. <sighs> Why she, have we not fucking done that? She finally caught it. Well, look at the soundboard. It's full. We we only have nine sounds and none of those, all of those were used every single, like so many times. There wasn't a single one on the board that could not have been there the entire time. Literally only because I had the power get uh, my board it i then you the didn't. power went to my head i was making a joke because you never used the sim sound oh, no. 
<laughs> yeah. That one sucked. I just, I'm sorry. I assumed it was a throughput. I thought EA would have consistency. I should have. <laughs> I shot it. No. I, I thought I should have done more research. That's okay. Um, but anyway, you can find us on all social media platforms. I guess the cool ones. Anyway, uh, we're on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and Patreon and and Twitch and Twitter and Mastodon and Hive and we're not on those. We're not on. Those. I don't even know what those are. I don't know what Mastodon is. That's fine. You know. Anyway, it's it. at <laughs> Judgy's Pod. J U D G I E S Pod. And. Go ahead and sign over for the Patreon. One dollar a month, you get into the Discord. The Discord is where it is. There's a piss baby meetup happening in January, January? and you got to be in the Discord to get those deets. That's pretty exciting. It's in it's Chicago, neat. but a lot of people are coming from all over the states. So <clears throat> that's it's crazy. To me. And we'll make an appearance. Maybe. Yeah, we're not committing to anything, but we might. I might be pooping my pants that weekend, or why? Because it's so. Never mind. Okay, bye. Have a good bye. week. Bye. The judges love you. This is going to throw me off because if that other sound was slowed down, this one might be slowed down. One, two, three, four. Yes. We all got it on B. Good job. I did it. No, you, you counted wrong, but we kissed on your B. Yeah. Play it back. <laughs> Play it back. It sounded right in my headphones. It's because we all kissed. So we... Cool. All of 